Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm joined by Michael Dabrowski, and this is for SciFox. Uh, I'm excited to be chatting about this with you. This is, uh, we started talking, what, in November, December of last year? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, something like that. And your company offers this kit that we're going to be chatting about for blood work. And what excited me was just that it has a lot of the markers that I'm already angling for in the first place. In fact, it's actually what originated our company with Own Your Labs, but you're able to get this blood work at home, right? Mm -hmm. So I worked out with you um, getting these tests myself and spoiler alert for people that want to stay to the end of the video, uh, we're actually going to feature it as a beta in the Own Your Lab store. So we'll try to post a link down below on where people can go for that beta page if they want to try it out. Uh, but I, I'm right now going to literally go through the results that uh, I got in doing it and then comparing it to LabCorp blood work that I had taken at the same time. So let's actually go real quick to the shared screen on my PowerPoint. And full disclosure, uh, I had already revealed these results to Michael from earlier. We actually recorded a video, but there were some technical issues with it. So this is a little bit of a re-record. But that said, for those who aren't familiar, this is the kit. I took some pictures. That's the one on the left. And what's great is when you open it and you're going through the instructions, you have here a QR code that basically allows us to link this kit with the account that they either set up then if they don't have one or to an account they already had that exists. Is that right? Yeah. So until you scan that QR code, the kit is generic. You can actually gift it and things like that. But once you've scanned that QR code, you have to link it to a registration page and then it becomes under a name. So whoever scans it and takes the test, that has to be the same person. Gotcha. So even if I ordered this, like, let's say, you know, for my dad or somebody like that, um, I can literally send them the kit. Mm -hmm. even if I'm the one who ordered it. And then so long as he uses this QR code to link it to his account, then he's fine. Exactly. It's completely flexible. Great. There's, I don't actually have everything here, but the um, there's Band-Aids, you have uh, Lancers, which I don't have shown. Uh, but what we're doing is we're going to be getting blood from my finger and putting it into this card that you have that's uh, fascinating because it actually separates the uh, plasma, uh, much like we would see in, you know, a LabCorp office that has a centrifuge, except it's without the actual mechanistic centrifuge centrifugation to accomplish that. Is that right? Yeah. So this is one of the pillars of like what makes the test work is that this card filters uh, as the blood runs across the card, it filters out the plasma, and so uh, we're able to do all the typical protein or hormone tests out of plasma, and then the HbA1c, which is hemoglobin-based, out of the red blood cells. It was really interesting, and I don't want to sugarcoat it for people who haven't done this yet. When I was doing it, I did note that you have to get a decent amount of blood out of your fingers. So um, don't I want, to, I want to manage expectations that it's not like, say, a glucometer where you're just getting like one little bulb we actually need to lance enough to where I can actually drip it off of my uh, fingers up to the point where it fills the square in its entirety. And then you actually see it going and spreading out from underneath out. And that's where it's doing the separation as you described. Okay, so I end up getting this at the same time that I'm getting the LabCorp blood work. And here are the results. First of all, the lipids. This is from the same test, by the way. It's, it's a composite of a whole bunch of different markers, but the lipids, I mean, I was just genuinely incredibly impressed. Total cholesterol, it was about a 7% difference, 328 versus 353. Um, LDL cholesterol, you had it at 248. LabCorp had it at 274. HDL, 67 versus 67. There's literally no difference. Triglycerides were even very close, even for as noisy as that can be. But of special interest to myself, and I know a lot of people are watching this, are the apolipoproteins, ApoA1, which is, of course, part of HDL, and ApoB. ApoB is part of this same kit, uh, which is great. I, 
I'm curious, how did you guys come to the conclusion to include both of these? I'm I'm used to it just being us geeks who care about this the most. Yeah, I, I did a lot. So, I mean, we talked to a lot of doctors, but I, I did a lot of research myself just on rather than typically what people do is they go to kind of the medical community and they say, what are you measuring now? And let's measure that. Uh, but I actually thought that we had an opportunity here to try to reach into the future a little bit and just measure many things uh, and look at what's like, what would be the most value to the end user? Not just because doctors actually often don't want to measure things because they don't want to deal with the interpretation. Um, but since this is kind of putting it into the hands of the end user, we try to put in as many useful markers as possible. And I mean, you can ignore them if you don't know, you know, if you don't want to deal with it, that's kind of our approach. Um, and that's how we ended up with APOA1, APOB, because the studies are really clear that those are more accurate in many cases than LDL, HDL. Now, to be sure, again, because it's a home test, my expectations were pretty, I don't want to say low, but let's just say liberal on accuracy. I'm I'm looking for anything within a 15 to 20% margin of error. And don't get me wrong, we're going to be getting into some tests that exceed that. But the, the fact that the lipids and especially APOA1 and APOB were this close was especially relevant to me. So I, I definitely appreciate that so far. And we're not even through all the, the tests yet. Now we're going to go on to inflammation. Of course, everyone knows I really love high sensitivity CRP. CyFox reported it as a one and LabCorp is a 0 0.99 for just a 1% difference. This was really impressive to me. Homocysteine had a bit more of a margin and ferritin actually had a, a fairly sizable margin at 39%. So you were reporting 234.3 mm -hmm. versus 387. And did you have any comments on that as far as ferritin in particular? Does that seem to be a little bit more common? So and I've thought about it a little bit. The only thing I can think of is that uh, I, it's so, well, we can go into this when we discuss vitamin D, like where all the lab errors come from. But with ferritin, um, it could be sometimes some markers even matter, like which arm you take it out of. But I, I don't know, 39% is a pretty big difference. So it's probably not all due to that. You also, of course, lost some blood, some ferritin when you uh, uh, took your lab corp test. Um, That's and then actually... you took the test kit after took the test kit after the lab corp test, right? Correct. That's actually a very interesting yeah. point. I, I had I thought about it, I would have tried to use fingers on the arm opposite what I got. I mean, I don't know if it would have had that big of a difference, but it might have been an interesting thing to try. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But but for certain things, doctors will actually pull if it's like super critical, they'll do both arms in the hospital because sometimes the arms don't agree. Uh, but but this is a pretty this is a pretty big difference. We can go into once we hit vitamin D, which has like the the really big difference. We can go into all the possible causes. But I do have a question for you. Actually, have you considered? Do you think your ferritin is too high, or do you think this is good? Like, oh. what's your opinion on ferritin? <laughs> actually, that's a bit of a longer topic. Uh, ferritin <laughs> is actually something I attract with myself for a long time for. Even before keto, I had actually had it mm. in the 500s, which concerned my doctor. Mm. And after going keto, it was in the 500s for a while, and then even went up to the 700s for a period of time. And then I don't know if this is related, but after having more liberal use of salt, I actually saw it climb down much more. The, mm. the catch is that, of course, I do a lot of these experiments. I get a lot of blood taken out to accomplish these experiments. I never know how much that in itself has an impact. I don't want to get too lost in the weeds on that one, but the uh, right. but it is it is one of interest. Let's let's go ahead and then jump into the hormones. We have morning cortisol that did show a bit of difference, but to be fair, I'm not too surprised on the hormones having a little bit more of a margin of difference. Um, in fact, I thought all of them would have a bit more of a margin of difference just because they are, well, frankly, they're they're smaller, and I. And correct me if I'm wrong, even between labs of things that tend to have greater variation, hormones, because of the smaller quantity parts per million, uh, tend to just have that higher level of standard deviation. Is that is that right? Yeah, definitely that. And also just how long has the test been around? So do, how often do doctors order it? The tests that are ordered really frequently tend to harmonize very well across many labs. 
but tests like testosterone, they're not being ordered nearly as much as let's say CRP. Uh, so you're not going to get the same agreement between labs because of just the way that the lab system works, like how it's all regulated, it doesn't force harmonization across instruments as much as you would like. One thing I wanted to point out is that actually cortisol and testosterone in the morning, I mean, they have this diurnal curve. So it could also be even that like half hour or whatever between the tests could could have some effect and you see them moving together. So the cortisol is lower on the, and so is the testosterone. on That's the, um, true. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you may be right about that. Not only yeah. that, <laughs> not, yeah, not only that, um, I do want to point out the reason I highlighted this is because I converted your units so that they would match up with lab corps. They were, they're actually different between deciliter and milliliter. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, which I wish I had to, to do the comparison, uh, but I'm not too surprised by the result. And then lastly, let's get to metabolic fitness. You have A1C in here, which is great, and it was nearly dead on. Uh, insulin, uh, which I, I think I already talked to you about this before. If I were held to three different tests that I could order, it would be insulin, CRP, and lipids. So the accuracy on, on insulin being this close was something I found very heartening, and I really appreciate. Um, but, of course, the, the one we knew we were going to be talking about was vitamin D, and actually, what's funny about that is you had kind of warned me in advance. In fact, I think you literally said that we often, that you often see that it's typically twice what the mm -hmm. uh, LabCorp lab reports. Um, but you, you are pretty sure you understand why that's probably the case, right? With vitamin D in particular. Yeah. I mean, our, our guess is this is something we're still investigating, but our guess is that it's just because of the instrumentation that's being used and the way that instrumentation is actually like uh calibrated they don't have to it's not all calibrated across the whole industry the same way uh and that's just historically how blood testing works like they just compare themselves to the previous version of their own instrument um but the reason we keep vitamin d in is that uh the values are consistent with themselves so basically if you continue taking this at home test and we've done a lot of testing on this now like thousands and thousands of tests it does respond to changes. So for example, if you spend more time in the sun or you supplement vitamin D, you'll see this number go up. Uh, and so we try to basically, um, you know, we leave it in because it's valuable. Like if it's very low or very high uh, and you want to change that, you can actually change your lifestyle and you'll see that you'll see the changes in the test. Yeah. So there, there in, in short, there may be an internal validity where we mm -hmm. can actually see this going up by the same magnitude as this going up and vice versa. And, yeah, or for uh, example, if you see, and we do see this, if you do see a correlation in your vitamin D and let's say your CRP, that correlation is real for sure. So it doesn't really matter if you, if you, you know, your, your, you got your vitamin D to the middle of the range and your CRP dropped, uh, that's, th those are real valid statistics. So that, that's why we keep it in, but we're trying to figure out how to harmonize it with LabCorp and Quest. So that's, uh, hopefully that's coming, but not at this point, we do get this kind of result once in a while. It's also not always so. <laughs> Right, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, and as everybody who follows my work knows, I, I like to be as transparent as possible on particularly when I'm doing these experiments and the data coming back. And so I wanted to share this with everybody who's watching this now, especially if we're going to try to help um, move your kits through on your labs for those people who'd like to have it to just be aware of, you know, my own validation test that the the value that I think can't be understated is even if somebody were to say, hey, actually, I do think it's, you know, I, I would have a problem with one of these tests having, you know, being off by this amount such that I want to ignore it. That's that's perfectly valid. Um, I probably would go quite a stretch just to get the lipids alone. <laughs> like, it's great to have the additional CRP and insulin on board and for the accuracy that they have, given it's a home test. That's what I know mm -hmm. is going to kind of change the game for a number of people, including myself. For example, um, I want to do craft uh, testing um, with, or craft OGTT, uh, oral glucose tolerance test. But it's a real pain in the butt to actually be at LabCorp and have the phlebotomist actually pull out blood each time. With this, I could I could do an OGTT craft test with insulin at home along with the glucometer and actually you know, get the sort of results that I would like to at least get 
um, at that that threshold. So in, in that part, I'm pretty excited about this. And you know, as long as everyone knows that this is a beta on the upfront, uh, I, I think this is pretty exciting. I think that there's a lot of possibilities here. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I'm really glad you did a very controlled experiment. So the very we we have people sometimes doing this, like a blood draw and a card, but you you actually did it with a very close time interval, right? Which is which is great. So that's always uh, we don't have that many like really careful experiments that people have run outside of the company. Of course, we've done it a lot. Um, yeah, well, yeah, and for, for what awesome. it's worth, that is one benefit of working with me, and that I'll have some upcoming experiments where I'll likely do some more synchronizing. And then I can I can continue to report to you and everyone else uh, what these differences are between. Um, I will also mention one other thing, which is I'm excited because I think that this will, as I understand, the only state you're unable to fulfill in is New York. Mm -hmm. But because of LabCorp services, um, there, there are three states that we've been prohibited from servicing, not just New York, but also uh, Rhode Island and New Jersey. And uh, you'll be able to process kits at Rhode Island, New Jersey. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to expand on that there soon. And don't don't quote me on it yet, but we may also uh, be servicing another country with your kits soon, depending on how the beta goes. I'm just I'm just I'm excited because again, this is this is one more way people can get blood work, uh, particularly in you know from from their home, which I know a lot of people are going to be very interested in doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, there's a great overlap between the people who we've up to this point served and, you know, the kind of the the people using own your lab. So I, I think they're going to really appreciate like the convenience of not not having to go in for a blood draw every time and so on. Um, so, yeah. All right, it's, Michael, uh, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I look forward to seeing what kind of results we can turn around to help you out as well. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Dave.